Alright, what's going on people, Ring World Map here, and today we're going to talk about the two fights that I predicted, or the two fights which I made predictions on. The first one is going to be Bivol Zenad, second one is Joyce vs, not Joyce, fuck. Second one is Wilder vs Jean, okay? So, let's start with Bivol Zenad. I gotta be honest, I wasn't able to watch rounds one and two, okay? I was only able to watch round three onwards, and I didn't expect Bivol to end it. Or I didn't expect Bivol to stop him at all, not even end it in a particular round, but I didn't expect him to end it at all. And the reason why is because he's been kind of reluctant in his past couple of fights, but this one was really good. And it was mainly because, uh, first of all, the defensive defensive holes of, of Zenad, and secondly, the innate predictability of the offense of Zenad. Zenad only has a flicker jab, he has that one-two, he has no left hook. No uppercuts as well, no inside fighting. And so I think Bivol was able to figure that out pretty early. But like I said, that speed, that speed difference. Zenad is faster than Bivol's speed for speed. I already said that in my prediction. And we saw that right there. That's actually what made, or that's actually what gave Bivol difficulties in the early rounds. It was just that Bivol has faster feet, he has better timing, better accuracy. But speed for speed, in terms of hand speed, Zenad is way faster, way more explosive than Bivol, okay? That flicker jab gets quicker, or that flicker jab gets to the target much quicker for Zenad than it does with Bivol. So what did Bivol do? Bivol decided to use his footwork, he decided to play around with his guard. You can see him playing around with that high guard, with that hands down guard. And every now and then, when Zenad stands still in that mid-range around arm's length, instead of leading with the jab, Bivol will lead with the right hand with a chop and right, and that caught Zenad on the cheek a lot of times, because Zenad has that bladed stance, he doesn't have a step back game, he doesn't have that step back, he doesn't have quick feet, per se, well he can move laterally, but in terms of in and out footwork, not much you can really see from uh, Zenad, but he is good at backpedaling, he is good at moving laterally, but in and out, forward to backwards, he's not really good at that, so Bivol was able to take advantage of that, caught him on that bladed stance with that right hand, and he decided to also exploit that loose guard of Zenad in the later rounds. He started off with a jab and then that left hook, which I also pointed out in my video where I said that Zenad is really vulnerable for that left hook. So really something that he gotta be watch he gotta watch out for. And look, I said that Zenad shouldn't worry. If you watch my prediction, I said Zenad shouldn't worry about the left hook, because Bivol doesn't really throw it much. I was proven wrong, okay? Bivol actually has a pretty good left hook and it's what was able to knock down or knock out, not knock out, but stop Zenad in his tracks. He set it up with a jab, boom, came up, came up, came up over the top of that left hook, and that's what ended the fight right there. He ended it with a flurry, two, three, um, some body shots as well. I forgot the exact sequence, but that was pretty much the end of it. You know, a good statement for Bivol, good statement against uh, Better Biev after that postponement that happened, but uh, if it was Better Biev, this was actually a good fight for Bivol, I gotta be honest with you, because we were able to see some a glimpse of that killer instinct coming back, right? He kind of lost that in the past couple of years, don't get me wrong, great boxer. Um, he pretty much dominates all of his opponents, but in terms of killer instinct, we haven't seen that with Bivol in a long time, so this is a good fight to kind of wake him up. Now let's move on to Zhang versus Wilder. The fuck did I say? Oh, by the way, I predicted a decision win for Bivol, but I got that wrong. Bivol ended it way early. But I did predict that he was gonna, or I did say that Zenad should watch out. Not watch out, but Zenad's really open for that left hook. I just didn't expect Bivol to actually use it, to actually throw it. So great win for Bivol right there. Zhang versus Wilder. This was one that I got right. Okay, if you watch my prediction, I said round five to eight TKO. It was gonna end way earlier than you expect, and that's exactly what happened. And then in round five, I gotta be honest, round one to four was kind of boring. Not much going on, a lot of pawing, a lot of measuring the distance, right? And usually when they throw those big ass shots, they smother themselves. So the round one to four was his news fest. Um, round five, Wilder kind of got into a momentum. He landed two right hands, which pushed Zhile Zhang back. But Zhang went back right at him with a check hook. So I think Wilder threw a right hand or a jab, something like that. And then Zhang was able to catch him with that check hook counter. I can't remember the exact sequence. 
but was, he was able to land a Checo counter. Wilder turned his back, and Zhang caught him with another check hook, and that was the end of it. Not much setup, I gotta be honest. I was expecting more setups from Gilles Zhang. I said in my prediction that I wanted to see three or four punch combos. He didn't have that shit. He had maybe two punches at max per combo. It's like a step and jab and then a left hand or a step and jab or a left uppercut to the body. It was it was very predictable, but the the main thing that made the difference here is his power, you know. And his the weight difference also enabled him to take some of those punches by Wilder. Not to say that the weight actually guarantees that you'll be able to take the shots of Wilder because we've seen heavier dudes like Luis Ortiz and uh, Deon not Deontay, Tyson Fury, right? They blew up on their way to fighting Deontay Wilder. But what happened? When they got hit with that right hand, they still went down. But with Zhang, it's not only the weight advantage, but it was also the chin. You gotta respect the chin of this motherfucker, you know. And a lot of people compare it to George Foreman. I can actually see why. I can actually see that comparison. I, I can see why people compare him to George Foreman. And just like George Foreman, I can see the career of Zhile Zhang lasting much longer than we think. Maybe four to six years more. I can see him fighting up until his 40s. I'm not sure if that's a path he wants to take, but he has that great equalizer which allows him to fight even at an old age like that. He has the chin to withstand the punches of those young guys, and um, he doesn't really get out of shape all that much. Yes, he's a little chubby, but he doesn't blow up between fights that much, right? So that was it. Great win for Zhile Zhang. Again, I didn't really see much strategy there. He just caught him at the right time with that check hook, waited for Wilder to come in hard, and then he was able to catch him on that front leg with the check hook, and he was able to end the fight right there, you know? I expected it. I expected the the finishing blow to be a 2-3, actually, whether it may be a 2 to the head, 3 to the head, or 2 to the body, 3 to the head, but he just needed one shot. He just needed the check hook to stop Deontay Wilder. 